I really do suppose I should make a video just for this little guy here and a nice clickbaity title for it because this is the uh, the world's smallest clownfish living in the uh, world's cheapest nano reef that isn't, you know, a jar or something. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a two gallon tank. And in it is a true percula we call squirmy. And what you might notice about squirmy is he has a deformed jaw structure. And as such, he was actually very unlikely to live. He is now two and a half years old, two years old. And even though he cannot open and close his mouth, he eats the flake food like a total champ. And he is just adorable. <laughs> Good job, Squirmy. <sighs> so anyways. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. And welcome back to the Easy Reefers channel. I am Sean Morris, your host with 30 years of reef keeping experience. And here on this channel, we are here to help you focus on the health of your saltwater fish. Now, <sighs> Oh, my knees. Oh, oh, my knees. This is a... A $10 eBay light. And it broke. <laughs> and then this broke. And then the other part of this became the part of that that we could find. Because we couldn't find that. Oh, look, there it is. There it is. When was that found, and why did nobody tell me so I could just come in here and put that on there? And yet, somehow somebody managed to put the wood. This is special. This is very I'm going to fix that in, in a little while. I, I can't really do it one-handed while filming, but, although I do like a challenge, don't I? Hmm. It's electronic. It's over salt water. How can I resist? <laughs> okay. Let's see here. I suppose I could do the uh, bold thing of turning on the light so I can see. Oh, you can almost see too now. So, this little guy's just gonna go over here for a second. Okay. Uh, 
come out like that. And this goes back on there. And I need to come, I need to clean it. That I will actually do later. Okay. Look at that. So here we have the simple yet elegant way I wanted this fish tank to look. Big, <laughs> cute, Aunt. We could even uh, put that right there, and there you have a reef tank for under fifty bucks. <laughs> And um, I don't do water changes on this tank. Yeah, I don't do water changes on this two gallon tank with a fish in it. Maybe every couple of months I'll come in here, skim the surface when it gets gunky. It's getting about that time. My wife has been remembering to feed it more, so my combined feedings has been getting a little plump but his stripes have been coming in so it's a good thing right he's a true percula don't even have to worry about topping it off much but most clownfish breeders would have killed squirmy they would have murdered him it's fish murder. No, I'm just I'm giving people a hard time. But look at this guy. If all the breeders you've heard of, and I'm talking just about all of them, all that I know of, this is how they do things. This is what, like, instructions tell you to do. I just refuse to do it. Whenever they have a fish with deformities that they think can't make it, said little bunny foo foo, they euthanize it. Oh, that sounds friendlier because it has the word youth in it. They kill the motherfucker. Oh. But anyways, back to the fish room after I ash my cigarette in the sink. Oh, my hips are hurting. <laughs> Getting old. But that never gets old. <laughs> so I'm going to do another video on... Uh, wave pump strategy specifically later on um because i got a lot of it fresh on my mind because uh wind up moving the other current usa pump from that side into there so now we just have the one big one in here all right and we'll talk more about that later but right now i want to talk about this guy well namely this guy that is Bruno which is the uh, owner of the Prestige Reese former red scooter bunny dragonette Dragonettes being a uh, uh, debatable subspecies or separate species of blenny, distinguished by their uh, big, pretty display, especially on the males. This guy is obviously a male, aptly named Bruno. 
and well the first thing I'm going to say is this if there seems to be some kind of drastically unreversible situation for your fish. Above all else, make sure you have an absolutely certain concrete set in stone diagnosis. Okay? Here's the thing. I just recently had what is clearly some sort of a disease outbreak. And I had two mandarins, which are also dragon nets, very similar in anatomy and habits, exhibit identical symptoms. I had two of these fish, one in that tank and one in that tank. Both of these tanks have significant microfauna in them because of the uh, rubble zone areas that I use and because they're also attached to a spawning tub for microfauna which is which in turn drains into that which is basically copepod heaven um, I have an aptasia eating file fish in there and it you know it can't even exhaust that resource it just stays down there and pretends to be grass basically good luck finding her her name is Myrtle if you call to her she might come to the front glass for food though I have places for microfauna it is never ever depleted not unless I have flea drops on my hands and I put them in my tank and it's been like 10 years since I've done that, at least. About, maybe, yeah, 10 years. <laughs> <sighs> now. Hi, Bubbles. You look hungry. And the quarantine seed to come on. We're still in recovery mode from the Brookinella outbreak. And I, as you may know, am a clownfish breeder. So I really take fish disease seriously. Tatsuki had a supposedly incurable viral cauliflower disease which I managed to rid her of without scraping. But in the place of the wound, she seems to have some sort of residual bacterial infection that I'm guessing by her twitching and breathing behavior is caused by sea lice, similar to what has exasperated the Brookinella outbreak brought in from the yellow tank from Petco. Because one week isn't enough quarantine. That's fine. Ten days minimal. Ten days. So anyway. Wish they'd come out a little more so we could see them better. Tatsuki. Yumachika. Yes, the gay guy and the lesbian from Bleach. Because they don't get along too well, frankly. Got the right size disparity. 
but Totsky's health, I guess, isn't pleasing enough to the premium pro-aquatics. <laughs> Fucking, you don't want to know how much they charge in a retail store for clownfish. <laughs> He like semi submissively shimmies for her, but then he'll like bite back and tail slap her. And I'm gonna have to get her in good health. She's horny. <laughs> saw that she's all twitching she must be feeling a little bit better she's been doing that a lot since she's been in this tank she started doing that last night but she's gonna have to basically kick his ass she's gonna have to kick his ass then and only then will he submit and I think we're getting a nice little show this morning I don't think they realize the cameras here they're just they're staying in the shadows because it's morning and they don't like the bright light. But look, she, she keeps going for him, trying to get a submissive twitch out of him. And he's shimmying that semi-submissive, but then he's like kind of fanning her back. then go at it for a while but once she's rid of the sea lice which should take another day um, she should start healing a lot better those scars have kind of healed and then come back and then kind of healed and then come back but they've never cauliflowered up again oh hello just hit the table <laughs> so anyways my when this all happened okay I quarantined those fish and being that they're male and female who didn't really get along I had a I had a five gallon incubator set up there as a quarantine. I had one of them in there. I had Bruce in here. And they did this thing where they would just sit in the corner. Wow, that's 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 a lot of poo. I just siphoned that out last night. That is that is one night's worth of poo. Keeping me busy. Anyway, so this is my and Leo. Um, during this time period, I uh, did not yet have a treatment that my was responsive to. Okay. And that wound up being formal. Note the glove. Harsh shit. Okay. I don't know if he's coming out a little more. Hi, babies. Totsky, you machika. Maybe it was the camera. 
zoom in. Such a good looking fish. So anyways. What was that little twitch about? might be trying to practice for I've already got medication in the water turn on the white light and see if it's thick enough nope the water does not look blue so here's what we're gonna do Water's nice and blue. Just seven drops. And a ten gallon that isn't full all the way, basically. And that's the second dose this morning, two hours later. And that pot in there is going to absorb whatever I put in. So, uh, rather than doing a full dose and just wasting a bunch of formalin, I can do a Kind of a therapeutic level throughout the day. I'm gonna go ahead and put another capsule of Paragard in there. In fact, today's the fourth. Third day of medicating. Yeah. Third day you're medicating. You want to make sure you dip it in the bud. Do not reduce it until the fourth or fifth day. I'm just putting that right in the stream of the aqua clear over right there. Now, those blindness symptoms, I very much know exactly what he was talking about with what might have seemed to be blindness on the part of that dragon man. But I don't think it was blindness. 
and I uh, you know I was with my finger right in front of its face and everything the thing is a sick fish is listless it doesn't react to stimuli okay what you have is a sick fish need to be treated. Now, if I would have gotten my formalin the day before each of those fish died, instead of the day after the last one died, or the day that the last one died, <coughs> I'd still have my male and female mandarin. Hey, my. What, you thought I was coming to trap you? You're not getting moved yet. Hey, little Leo. Look at all your fins growing back. Even with that giant clownfish picking on you. Out with the poo. And then I go hunting for white spots on the glass. In the Sean Morris clean bottom method. Not to be confused with how I prevent posterior itching. What? My.
It's okay, Ma. I'm done. Go on, baby. It's okay, Ma. Go on. Good girl. That was a fresh one. My little scrubber rig is such that any actual encrusted cysts, I can feel them. This isn't quite as tedious as it looks. It does hurt my back to get up from this position, but I can pretty much tune out the back pain while I do it. And it's actually kind of relaxing. I have a bad habit of hanging my weight on the top of the glass here. just to keep the water conditions nice and pristine. Until it gets so dirty where this isn't really an option. And then I'll do this before I take it out and replace it with a clean one. And then just wash this one out. But the reason being is if you take that off of there, then the suction stops. And, um, and all that shit comes flying off.
you got to be meticulous about the process here. Because what you don't want to do is these long brush strokes first. Because then you'll get to the top here. And you'll just be knocking a bunch of shit into the water column. Then it'll just get sucked right back up by the filter or wind up on the floor. So any little white spots that get lodged in here, I'm going to make sure I get them. Any little white spots on the floor, I'm going to make sure I get them. And it's about numbers. Reducing the overall number of basically egg sacs for whatever bucket is. Because their egg sacs are basically little grains of sand. See what happens is that little thing on there side is called a trophant and uh, even the ones that are smaller than X they'll form trophants they're just harder to see you may need to use some sort of vision augmentation spectroscope spectacles um, a giant magnifying glass works nice. <coughs> I see a little thing on the fish. That breaks off. And what it wants to do is just attach to a rock. Just a little stagnant cave inside of a rock somewhere. No matter what the disease, that's what it likes to do. And chances are, if you have a dragonette, or say like a blue hippo tank, it likes to sleep right where that ick likes to go. And in the morning, when that ick starts using its little solar power generator to wag its little sperm tail off into the horizon, it's not going to have to go far before it will find your mandarin or your blue hippo tang. And while mandarins can't get ick, Because the uh, well, that they can get ick. They uh, they don't tend to suffer from it during outbreaks, unless water conditions are extremely poor and circulation overall in the tank is extremely poor. But they're not entirely immune to it, and they're certainly not immune to brookinella, sea lice, antiludium. All the unknowns that are similar to those things that we find in the hobby. There's one stuck in stuck in acrylic in there. Just like it's the numbers game here, when I'm trying to uh, reduce the reproductive cycle, 
Not eliminate it like a tank transfer method, but reduce it by extreme means. Okay. Sorry, I had to pretend that was an elephant for a second. It's the numbers of Brookinella in stagnant no-flow zones that can affect and kill, say for instance, just that guy's Dragonette. Now, the reason why they call it clownfish disease because it, quote, doesn't seem to affect other fish very often. Um, the reason why it affects clownfish so easily is physiological. It has to do with the air bill. But the reason why it affects dragon gnats is because when that light comes on and those dinoflagellites once again hatch out of their little tomite cyst egg sac, They're going to go in concentration into whatever fish is right there in that hole. And some of them are going to go right past it. But, you know, it's like if you got a target and you got a thousand bullets going at it. You know, target's real big, taking up most of the trajectory. At least half of those bullets are going to hit that target. The rest of those bullets, you got to turn up and swim around and flow around in the tank. And they might get taken out by the protein skimmer. They might get eaten by copepods. pods. But they're not nearly as likely to find any fish as a host or in sufficient quantity so as to reduce its immune system enough to successfully reproduce within that host. Now it can infect the fish and get it breathing heavy, but it might not be reproducing there. So unfortunately, what Prestige Reef should have done is what I wish I could have done if I had that Mardell Quick Cooter a little bit sooner. Little dude is staring me right in the face right now. Hey, my. Oh, what? Y'all hungry, huh? Like I never feed you. Act like I never feed you. I'm just a mean old fish daddy. Bye -bye. That's all y'all want? Y'all begging first thing in the morning, gonna take two pellets each? It's not time for Rod's food.
Totsky. Come on, honey, get some food. entirely too much. I didn't realize I had some stuck to my fingers and I just pinched between them. That would be New Life Spectrum Thera A. Or as one random dumbass Russian troll or somebody just with with, I'm sure, a great number of friends, oh yeah, commented the other day and said, crap. They said, New Life Spectrum was crap. <laughs> okay. I'm sure he read that on a fucking forum somewhere.
That was a good looking tusker. I wish Seekin would make a more concentrated version of Paragon. Because it really seems to me I gotta use like three or four times the fucking dose that they say. Maybe it is just because I'm running the clay pots and they absorb so much, but it just doesn't stay in the water long at all. Oh, and if you're running a protein skimmer, forget about it. It's just gonna come right out of the water. So anyways, I'm going to rig up a charger over here and start another live stream on mute just for these fuckers because they are just being too entertaining. Oh, look, I see somebody click the like button. They must agree. <laughs> anyways, so the point of this video is if you're not someone with a degree in veterinary science that specializes in fish disease don't euthanize a fish and if you are you better be really fucking certain on your diagnosis before you go and kill your own damn red scooter bunny I mean f really <laughs> Like, I mean, I don't want to be a dick. Seems like a nice guy. Great. You know, be beautiful channel. Um, beautiful reef tanks he's got. Prestige Reef. Appropriately named. But really? Just gonna go and kill the fucking fish because he's not eating? This one has survived two years. Yeah, that's why I started the video with Squirmy. Perfect example of why you shouldn't euthanize, no matter how dire the circumstances look. That's why one day when we're clownfish breeders, we're also going to be mangrove breeders for coastal restoration. And that charity is going to fund our deformed clownfish heaven. Deformed fish heaven. Right. So anyways, say bye-bye Tatsuki and Yumachika, and make sure you diagnose properly, else you better just keep fucking throwing medications at it, as per instructions on this channel, yo. Yeah, that being said, I'm not a professional, and try it at your own risk. But I've been doing this 30 years. So following my advice might not be too bad of a bad idea. Thanks for watching, y'all.
click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you got that notification. And uh, talk to the hand. Damn it.